hello, didn't see you there. I just am used to random cameras suddenly appearing in my bedroom while I'm wearing a microphone. <laughs> okay, so you know science, right? We're all familiar with it from like school and stuff. Science is really interesting. It is really, really interesting, but it can be really hard to understand. Even if you're good at reading stuff, if you're a really good reader, science can come across as very dry. You read a science book and it's like, uh, I'm reading the same sentence over and over and not getting any of it. Well, as an adult, especially, you know, as a student, you're like, uh, I never want to read this stuff again. I never want to learn this stuff again. Then when you get older, you get more interested in it all over again. So I have been collecting science books that are really actually interesting, easy to understand easy to learn something from, and I am going to present them to you today. Book number one. Let's jump right into it. The big book of what, how, and why. I had a feeling unless I looked at it that I was going to get those mixed up. The big book of what, how, and why by Bob Strauss. This is, okay, it's technically a kid's book, but let's face it, if you're not good at science and you're wanting to learn more, we're better to start than something that's maybe a little bit simplified. This is one of those, I'll show you, this is one of those factoid books, like here's a factoid, here's a factoid, so on and so forth. Big color pictures, big words, really pretty easy to understand, and it keeps you interested. It's like reading, when you were a kid, did you get National Geographic World magazine? I think now it's National Geographic Kids. It's kind of like that. Really interesting, easy to understand, learn stuff about the world around you. This is actually quite comfortable. Hmm. Moving on to something kind of in the same vein, only this is also for grown-ups. Thing Explainer by Randall Monroe. It's got a bookmark in it because I'm still looking through it. I got this one for Christmas. Um, it is, this book is simplified facts about complicated things, like, like how things work. Okay, there's that book on, I think it's just called How Things Work. I don't actually have that one. Um, but this open this up. Okay, this explains stuff in really, really simplified terms. Like, okay, a dishwasher becomes a box that cleans food holders. So it's very amusing to read, but also all the facts are right there. It explains how the thing works. Very cute and funny, really interesting. I love it. So moving on to the more grown-up type books. We're getting serious here. Okay, we can't do without I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Yuval Noah Harari? I said that weird. Yuval Noah Harari. <laughs> okay, I have Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. And he's written several other books. This is the only one I own. But they are oh, so interesting. Oh my gosh, it's just what it says. A Brief History of Humankind. There are not a ton of pictures. Yeah, there, are, there are a few. Yeah, like photographs, paintings. There are a few pictures, um, but not a ton. So it's mostly text, but it's storytelling. It's storytelling at its finest. So it keeps you really interested in the story of us, which, I mean, of course, I'm interested. Like I said at the beginning of this channel, that's kind of what I'm interested in is the story of us and the stories we tell and who we are and etc. So it's right up my alley. Next up. I personally am really interested in neuroscience and such like uh, neuroscience and psychology, all the stuff about the brain, how we think, why we think, what we think. So I have a neuropsychology book by neuroscientist David Eagleman. It's called Incognito, The Secret Lives of the Brain. David Eagleman actually has a TV show. I'm going to have to look it up and uh, maybe put a link in the description if I can find it. If not, I'll just say what it is. Um, he is a professional neuroscientist and one of those scientists who tries to explain things to layman in layman's terms. Um, this is interesting. I'll, I'll read a little bit here. In the sparkling and provocative book, renowned neuroscientist David Eagleman navigates the depths of the subconscious brain to illuminate its surprising mysteries. And um, so it's not only how the brain works, why it works that way. There are stories also of 
people who have had things happen to their brains um, to, to illustrate the points. This is the sort of thing I look for. I can't do without those personal stories that really relate it to a person that really helps you picture what's going on, kind of like watching an episode of House or something like that, only, well, more realistic and not dramatized to fit within 43 minutes. Okay, next up, this is kind of an interesting pick, I think. The Science of the Discworld um, by Terry Pratchett, of course, if you're familiar with Discworld. I certainly am. I have so many Discworld books, and I haven't read them all. <laughs> there's just too many. Um, he is a fiction author. Then there's also Ian Stewart and Jack Cohen, who are scientists, science guys. Um, this is interesting because it follows the fictional narrative of characters within the Discworld, the wizards. They have uh, created a miniature round world. Their world is not round. It is a flat disc, hence the name Discworld. They have created a miniature round world in their magic lab, as it were. And so we follow the narrative of what's going on in that world because they observe it. And it's like time within it is sped up. But it's basically our world and what happens in it. However, it's starting from the very creation, as it were, of our world. And it's taking us through even the parts that science isn't sure of, but they're uh, making suppositions of what they think might have happened, and they're explaining why. So every other chapter is the fictionalized narrative to help illustrate the points that they're making in every other other chapter, which is the scientific supposition and the scientific explanation why they are making that supposition. Bill Bryson. I find we can't do without Bill Bryson, even though admittedly this is the only book of his I've read. I really need to get on that. Uh, but this is a short history of nearly everything, uh, at least as pertains to us. <laughs> um, Bill Bryson is not a scientist, but he is one of those people who is very interested in nearly everything. So he went ahead and he tracked down scientists with his questions and got a lot of answers. No pictures in this book. Um, I don't think. No, I don't see any pictures. Um, a lot of text. So lots of storytelling, just basic straight up storytelling, pictures in your head. And just lots of really, really interesting info that makes you think. Gotta love it. Okay, we're getting down to it here because I, I really don't have all that many books. And I didn't go to the library, which probably would have been a good thing to do before this video. But, um, anyway, these are all just my books. Just just mine. These are books that I collect. There's a whole bunch of them. Here we are. Th this will make you smarter. This one's called Know This, simply. And this one's called This Idea is Brilliant. Now, <laughs> those are pretty... Um, pretty strong titles, right? This idea is brilliant and this will make you smarter and those are pretty hefty claims. What these are, it's not that necessarily. These are collected essays from the website edge.org. Every year they ask a question. Um, let's see, this question for this book was what scientific term or concept ought to be more widely known? And experts in varying scientific field and some artistic fields actually uh, wrote essays on what scientific term or concept ought to be more widely known in their opinion, in their scientific and learned opinion. So basically everybody's writing something about something in their particular field. Um, and not every essay is easy to read. Not every essay is penetrable for the layperson. A few of them I've read and gone, hmm, okay, that, right. But for the most part, <laughs> for the most part, yes, they do come across really well. And that's why these are all really interesting. And I, that's why I'm collecting them. They are edited by John Brockman, if you're looking for these. I, I will try to put links to where you can find all these books um, or at least list the titles so it's easier for you to find them. 
Okay, my last series, and it is a series, is by the ever popular, and there's a reason he's a popular author, Sam Keen. You may have heard of him. And he's a super cool, super nice guy, too, because I've mentioned a couple times online, oh, I've just finished reading this book by Sam Keen. Well, he obviously searches for that. And uh, when he finds somebody's read his book, he pops in with, oh, thank you so much for reading my book, and here's where you can learn more, and stuff like that. So promotional, but also just personal. So I like that. I collect Sam Keen's books. So as far as I know, I have them all. There is The Violinist's Thumb. That is hard to say. Violinist's. Violinist's thumb. The violinist's thumb is largely about genetics. Then we have The Disappearing Spoon. This one focuses on the periodic table. We have The Tale of the Dueling Neurosurgeons. You will never guess what specialty this applies to. The history of the human brain is revealed by true stories of trauma, madness, and recovery. There is Caesar's Last Breath, which focuses on air. Just everything about air. And the most recent one I got is the, uh, can I even say this? <laughs> the Bastard Brigade is what it's called. And this one, this one, I didn't think was going to be as interesting as the others because the others have different stories in them. Again, Sam Keen himself, he knows his science, but he's not a scientist, he's a science writer. So he collects these stories and talks to actual scientists to get the info that he needs. Um, so this one has different stories throughout history talking about um, genetics and such like. This one is basically one story. So I didn't think it was going to be as interesting. It is the true story of the renegade scientists and spies who sabotaged the Nazi atomic bomb. Interesting, but yeah, I didn't think it would be, oh boy, this, this is one of those stranger than fiction stories that just, there are a couple points where my mind was absolutely blown, where I was going, what? That did not happen, but yeah, it did. Oh my God. You will not believe how much depended on luck. How much depended on playing fool luck? It is. Okay, so yes, basically, reading those books just makes science so much more clear. Even though it's not learning science, learning science, it's still, you know, more than you did. I mean, it's learning, right? So that's a good thing. And it's just, it's fascinating. Maybe for me, it's like, it's just putting a human face on it, something that I can latch on to as a person, I don't know, something something that I can relate to. Like, if I'm just reading physics and, oh, here's the formula for this and the formula for that, I'm like, what? What does that even mean? I don't get it. But if you put a story to it, then I get it. These are stories, these are books that make science really, really interesting and easier to learn. And there's so much in life that I want to learn. So anything that can help with that is, well, it's, it's a help. <laughs> so I would like to know any interesting science books or maybe videos or movies, anything that you've learned from that really, really made you think about the world around us like that. I would love to know them. And um, if any of these books sound interesting to you, you know, please let me know. Let's talk about it down in the comments. Um, until then, I will see you next week. Have a good one. Bye.